because I've got two horns coming at my head, all three. <laughs> I had to do. Um, Are we uh, live? We're live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're like... you like. You do look like you've got a couple of horns, though, and he. <laughs> I had to take my background off um, the other day because um, I had to give an interview for a new initiative we're launching in the day job. So I had to swap. Um, uh, well, I couldn't put the um, logo for the initiative on, so I just had to um, keep it like this for the interview. And I forgot to put. It. I can't remember how I did right. it. <laughs> so the vortex we are talking about this evening, aren't we? Yeah, we mm -hmm. are. I know yeah. we did, I did put in the group by mistake manifestation, but it is you are right, Hillary. It is the vortex. Mind you, you know, to to manifest well, it's good to have a good understanding of the vortex, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we keep losing you, Hillary. Oh, uh, maybe I'll go upstairs. Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Mm. So, I don't know if I want to do that, though, because it gets a bit weird when I go up the stairs, isn't it? Let's see how we go. Yeah, let's see okay. how we go. Yeah. No, I think you're, it, well, I think you're all right. It's about, um, you don't have to call it the vortex. No, um, no, we discussed it the other night, but it is a basic premise isn't it of the whole um manifestation process which is that bit about vibrating at the right frequency yeah and making sure that you are in alignment um i read something really really interesting the other day and basically it was somebody just saying, um, get out of your own way because that interferes with the vibration. Mm -hmm. yeah. And well, that, um, that's the same as resistance, isn't it? That's in it's you know, we're the only ones that cause our own resistance. Yeah. And but resistance can come in many forms, can't it? It can come in that holding on too tightly, it can come in um. Do you doubt? Really doubt, that's it. Yeah, in, in that doubt. Um, and, and also um, inconsistency. Yeah, or being stuck in what, what is. Yes, yeah, not being able to sort of move forward. Um, and it was really interesting because I just sort of sat there and I thought, do you know what the... The way around that is just to tell yourself that your soul, your higher self, your higher being, whatever you want to call it, is knows what you want and is continuously um, engaging with the universe. And then I thought, well, okay, if that's the case, why don't we always get everything we want? Mm. And I thought, because people aren't in tune with it. Mm. So what the soul is actually communicating and vibrating, that is, if you like, that conduit for the vibration, it's, it is constantly sending, the tra it's constantly transmitting what you focus on. And if you're not in tune with everything and what you're focusing on is negative, that's what it's transmitting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, You're not having that connection. Well, no, no, and without that connection, it it's you're gonna stay where you are, aren't you? Or things will get worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um um on the subject of, of manifesting, I started this week and I needed, and it wasn't a huge amount, it was just a small amount of money. And I woke up Monday morning and I thought to get from Monday to Friday and with what I want to do this week, I needed a small amount of money. Even Tuesday morning, that money was not there. By lunchtime, the money was in me hand. Brilliant. 
And do you know what? As soon as as soon as I got the money, I realised that that was that that, that it had come to me. Do, do, do you know what I mean? And I was like. I couldn't stop grinning. And my mate said to me, what's up with everyone? There's nothing, don't matter. Because obviously not everybody's in tune with what, you know, they'll think you've gone do lally and nutty. But it was just amazing. As I say, it wasn't a vast amount of money, but the, the bit about um, I am a money magnet and money loves me it comes when I call. I thought, yeah, yeah. It certainly came when I called from Monday to Tuesday. It was there. Is it Abraham Hicks? It says it is as easy to manifest a penny as it is to manifest a castle. A button mm. as it is a castle. Button, that's it. So yes. it doesn't matter that it was a small amount. You could have asked for a vast amount of money. Yeah, well, it, but it, it was just it was just <laughs> so interesting to see. And I think I think and when it happens to you, you get this this joy because although you believe in it, when it actually happens. It's it, it's just a lovely feeling, isn't it? A lovely yeah, yeah. pleasure about it, and a and a, and a, just a. Well, that's what Abraham Hicks talks about: the universe will surprise and delight you, mm, mm. because it does. And it even, you know, the littlest things like a parking space right outside where you want to be, or yeah. I don't know you know missing the traffic because you've gone a different way or you know whatever it just those all the green things. lights on your route so that you're oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, or, amazing. Or having an impulse to turn a certain way and then something happens or you hear that something's gone wrong the you other know, way or something just those little things one time where our office used to be um there were two ways i could go home and one is a, a very, very, very busy A road. And the other is sort of round um, B roads. Um, and it's through the Dedham Vale. So it's very pretty and everything. But usually I would choose the A road because it is the quicker route. But this one time I thought, no, I'm going to go the B road actually. Because I was leaving early for some reason. And I went down the B road and I saw a sign for... Um, mind body fair thing for the Saturday I thought you know what I'm gonna go to that I've not got anything on this Saturday I'm gonna go that is where I picked up you know, my own my, my first Abraham Hicks book I'd never heard of Abraham Hicks before oh wow nice and I was just really nudged to go that way yeah, yeah, that is, that's lovely. That mm. yeah, and it is following those little nudges, isn't it? It's just then then it's not usually anything big, but that's that's why Abraham says that you you know yes, it is as easy to manifest a button as a car a castle as a button, but we've got more resistance against the castle. Yes, we don't have the belief. Therefore, we don't believe. Yeah, we don't believe. But a button. And, and actually, it's really, I've got a funny story about manifesting a button. And I can't remember what it was. I can't remember the exact story, but I needed a button for something. And I found one in the most random place. And it, it, I, I think it had something to do with a, a quilt cover. Maybe I was disposing of one and I, they had a button that matched something I exactly needed or something. But I remember thinking, oh, that's really weird. Because that, that's like, that's the perfect one. Mm. Well, I set out the other day because I found um, I opened the passenger um, side of my car after I dropped Henry off at school, and I found twenty pence on the on the well. So thank you very much. And I've got this tin where I put all the little bits and pieces. So I decided to um, have a look in other places that um, where I, I put the money and I knew I'd, I knew I'd cleared them out and put them in this tin, but I thought I'd have another look. I found so many coins, all in these places that I knew I'd cleared out. And it was really, really, I mean, it was lovely, but it was really, I thought, I know I've cleared these out, but there's more. And it was just that thing of there's always more. It's an endless supply. 
always more. And I was just thinking, you know, about, I mean, I, as you know, I, I said to you before, I am fascinated by the physical universe and, and, and all the images that are coming out of the new telescope and all that sort of thing. It just absolutely fascinates me. And I, Henry was talking about it on the way to school the other day. And he was talking about how old the universe is. And I said, you know what I find really fascinating about that? There is no time in the universe. So how can we age it? We're the only ones that create time. Time doesn't exist anywhere else. No. So how can we age it? How can we date it? How can we say that it's 14.8 billion rotations of the Earth around the sun? You can't measure it that way, can you? No. It's endless and ageless. And um, I thought, you know, you think about it, and it is continuously creating new galaxies, continuously creating new solar systems, continuously creating new planets. And that is the metaphor for that continuous, endless supply of, of growth and abundance and life. And it's just constant, constant, constant. Mm. Yeah, yeah absolutely we just have to be open to it, it yeah it never stays still it isn't static mm. it's completely dynamic absolutely hiding but i think it's really difficult to tune into that when when if we you know listen to the news okay. media because it, if you listen to that it's all doom and gloom we're all going to you know Still in a hand walk. basket <laughs> Well, you know, I'm going to say we're all going to die, but we're all, none of us are getting out alive. So there's no shock there. But it's, you know, oh, we should all be in fear. We should all be worried about this. We should be worried about that. And when you buy into it, that it becomes your reality. Mm. I was, um, this interview I gave the other day for work, um, the, the journalist guy who runs the um, online newspaper said there'd been um a murder in one of the in the area where he runs his newspaper he said and i hate running those stories but he said they get the most impressions mm. yeah and you know the the thing is as we've said before the brain the primal brain or the conscious mind is geared towards keeping us safe mm. and that makes it inherently negative so it feeds off of those negative stories. But we are not our minds. And we have the ability to challenge that mm. and say, thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for doing what you do, because you do a wonderful job of it. But my reality is of growth, prosperity, abundance, love all of those things. Yes, that this stuff happens, but it's a microcosm of what's going on in people's everyday lives. Mm. It's not the full truth. No, and there's, there's, there are plenty of things that are going on in the world that might be true, but we may not want to experience it. And just because it, I know Abraham say this a lot, just because it's true doesn't necessarily mean that you have to look at it. You know, we are living in, a, we're very lucky, we're living in a country that's got running water, running, you know, gas and electricity to our homes, Wi-Fi, all that. But there are people living in this world that many, many people are living in this world that don't have any of those things. But we don't focus on that because it isn't our reality. But if we did, we could soon end up there, I'm sure. Yeah. But... But we do live in a society, unfortunately, that, that tells us that, you know, this is wrong, that's wrong. you got to, you know, I mean, I, I often think if we did everything that we're told we need to do, we wouldn't, well, we, it wouldn't be possible. You know, you've got to go out and exercise for at least an hour a day. You've got to work 24-7 so that you can earn enough money to save for your retirement. You've got to sleep at least eight hours a day. You've got to, you know, grow your own vegetables and and 
cook all your own food and raise your own cattle and chop them up them yourself and you know <laughs> well you're not allowed to eat that this week yeah That'll yeah kill yeah you this week but yeah, last yeah. week we were supposed to have it and next week we'll probably be able to have it again but the week after they'll say no that's bad for you so if you listen to everything uh, yes you yeah. wouldn't know whether you were coming or going or if you'd been there it's like it's like um it's like the food you eat, right? The food you eat, yeah, some foods you eat are bad for you, depending whether your body reacts to that food that you're eating, right? Mm -hmm. You're my husband, it doesn't react to anything that he eats. <laughs> or me, it reacts to virtually everything. But it's like Abraham Hicks was saying about if you eat a piece of chocolate and as you're eating it, you you are negative about that piece of chocolate. Your body will be negative. Mm -hmm. But if you eat that piece of chocolate with absolute love and adoration, it, it's a different, it's a different, uh, um, your body accepts it differently. And Absolutely. It, and it was so interesting last night because on the news last night, they did this thing and Dave and I kind of went, what? It's not often Dave and I watch the news. And it was that, that tea has got more caffeine in than coffee. What they failed to say was that they told everybody that they did this in on the street. But what they failed to say was um, one, one certain type of coffee has more caffeine than tea, but the seven others don't. But they didn't tell you that. They just said... They made mm -hmm. out that all the coffees you drink have more caffeine than tea. So what's it going to do? It's going to make people drink coffee. And you mean the other way around? You said they said tea was more caffeinated than Yeah, so they'll stop coffee. drinking tea because they'll think they're right. getting caffeine in coffee. Mm. But there was only right. one cup of coffee that had more caffeine out of the yeah. seven that was picked. So caffeine's got less coffee than tea? Tea? has got less ca caffeine than coffee. That's why I'm getting confused. Apart from one brand of coffee. One brand of coffee has got more caffeine than, less caffeine than tea. Right, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, less caffeine. So than... They said, if you drink yeah. coffee, it, if you're drinking less caffeine, but what they failed to say was seven others were a lot higher. Mm. One of them in particular, was a lot higher than people who didn't say that. And I thought, no, what, a way, I the argument. what a way of getting people to switch what they're doing. Mm. I, I remember the at the beginning... The media is influencing us hugely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic um, that they were saying that you shouldn't take ibuprofen. Yes, that's right. Um, and you couldn't get paracetamol anywhere. Mm. Yeah, because well, for me, I think they probably had a short. Uh, uh, they'd over made paracetamol or something, and they wanted to get rid of it. Mm. Because then, then all of a sudden, nothing was announced. Well, Did not like no, nothing was announced about ibuprofen being fine for it. But it always suddenly, oh, it's fine for the virus. It doesn't even affect <laughs> it. And, and you just think it's all such a manipulation, and it's just I just don't I. I don't know the last time years ago I watched the news. I don't. We don't watch the news. That's all. I don't read newspapers. I turn it over if it comes on the radio. I do. I read headlines. I just read headlines. That's all. Um, I sometimes, if I'm in a shop, I might just glance at a headline just to have a bit of a laugh at, at what they're talking about. Um, but the, the thing you said about the, the chocolate rosa, Pam Grout says that as well. I think in is it E squared? Yeah, yeah. And um, is it Pam Grant? Um, I always yeah. get. Um, yeah, she she's definitely done something because one of her experiments is about the food and blessing and your food. Showing gratitude um, for your. Food but if you see, yeah, if, if, there's also that guy about the water, the Japanese guy that did the tests on water and and photographed the molecules of water. And if you say to water, "I hate you," you're vile. The 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 molecules of it are very, very different than if you just say I love you or thank you before you drink the water. Energy. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, it, and it was also even like listening to classical music made water much look much yes. nicer and it was much more looked in sync and pretty but it, like heavy metal music not good mm -hmm. and actually that's really interesting when you think about the fact you know we are mostly water mm. yes we are yes we are and so what we do totally affects the way we feel you know I firmly believe that every illness is firstly in the mind yes this at uh, the state of your mind and, mm -hmm. and 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 the stress you put on your body's yeah. through that, that thought through yeah that, and, and and invariably it's a negative thought isn't it yeah it is um, i mean physiologically when you are stressed so the, the brain has the fight or flight um the capacity mm -hmm. and it's primal and it was designed when we were not at the top of the food chain Mm -hmm. um we were part of the food chain um and so we would either fight the woolly mammoth or saber tooth tiger or we would run away from it or mm -hmm. very occasionally we would freeze and we still have that response to stress mm -hmm. but it was designed to only be for about 15 or 20 minutes because basically your digestive system stops your all of your um blood and oxygen goes to your muscles to pump them to run basically or to fight so you know you get that the stories of people who single-handedly lifted a car off of somebody mm. well that's that fight or flight it's adrenaline mm -hmm. pure adrenaline and then when it goes past a certain point it turns into the hormone cortisol which is not good for you over a prolonged period of time um, and it's your immune system is completely suppressed because in your, that 15 minutes, you're not going to wait. You're not going to go to the toilet. Um, and there are lots of bodily functions that your, um, your organs don't need to perform for 15 minutes. That's perfectly fine. But when you're looking at it over a very prolonged period of time, it starts to have a really significant impact. And if your mm. immune system is suppressed over a long period of time, we naturally produce cancer cells all the time. Mm -hmm. It's our immune system that kills them. Mm -hmm. And I am convinced it was working for Ken Livingston for two years and the stress, the constant stress and pressure um, that I was under for those two years that contributed to me having cancer. Wow. Wow. Because it was only three years after I left that I was diagnosed. Mm. And it was at that point, um, it had been, if I'm being brutally honest, there, were, there was a problem, probably 18 months to two years before, but I buried my head in the sand. But uh, it's also, it's like the, the Louise Tay story. I mean, her story of curing herself from cancer is incredible because that was cervical cancer, wasn't it, I believe? And she attributes that because she was raped as a child by a neighbour, as a very young child. And she held on to all that resentment. And actually, within three months, when she was letting it go and eating food that she was blessing and, and that was, you know, obviously very healthy, gone. Mm. Mm. After doctors told her that, no, 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 it wouldn't, you can't do that, it won't happen. But there are lots of stories of people doing that. Yeah. There are. I mean, we do. Everything is heavily medicated now. Mm -hmm. Whatever yeah. you do, it's medicalized and and medicated. Yeah. Depression is medicalized and and medicated. When you you know just throw tablets or something, actually, you need to figure out what's causing it. Yes. And, and, and so get that. outside get, go outside yeah. get some exercise in the fresh air and soak up the sunshine drink lots of good water and eat a healthy diet that's a lot to do with things like depression yeah. i think i think i think when you drink water and like hillary and i we drink the same type of water but when you drink good quality water that hydrates your body you're drinking good you're eating good food that nourishes your body 
you your mind is clearer so therefore you can think better when the, the the pharmaceutical companies are not stupid in the fact that they don't want you to die but they don't want you to be well so if they can keep you on on in some form of medication then you are in their control mm -hmm. I mean, but look at the um epidemic in america of um addiction yeah and that is mm -hmm. um it's not heroin and that sort of Thing. Oh, it's pharmaceutical. Is yeah, it's pharmaceutical. Yeah. And 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 how many millions upon millions yeah. upon millions do we spend in looking mm. at looking after the health of people? Mm. When it's well, not it, at all. It's not at all because otherwise they're not curing things. And 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 actually, a really good TV program just before we go because I'm just looking at the time yeah, and we're going to have to yeah. shoot off. But a really good if you. Um, it was on Disney Plus, but it's called Dope Sick, and it's about opioids. It's about oxycodone. It's um, so yeah. good, really powerful. Yeah, Makes no, you really think about it. I had a running injury in my foot, really painful. I mean, I was just I had palpitations with the pain and everything. And I took one lot of codeine just to go to sleep that night, and then mm. I thought, that's it. I'm not taking mm. any more. Mm. Just that one, and I'll, you know, bottle of them. And that was it. No more. Just that one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because I'm terrified of being, you know, becoming addicted to something like that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, you right. have to go. Oh, yes. Lovely yes. to see you. Lovely to see yes. to you. Yes. Have a lovely you weekend. Mm. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.